Hello, I'm Nate Smith and welcome to the ABI Dirt. Today we're going to be talking about ground engaging components. Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. What, Nate, what are you doing, man? I'm hosting today. You're, yeah. I'm what am I supposed to be I'm doing? hosting today. You're going to put on this blindfold. Oh, oh no. So, this is a test of what you understand about our ground engaging components. Oh, that's, this is going to be good. <laughs> Okay, Matt, so I want you to reach in and just touch the ground engaging component one time and tell me what it is. Rock. <laughs> Finger prints on the glasses, I deserve that. Okay, Matt, I want you to reach. Okay, I got one touch? Yes, I want you to reach into the box and touch it one time. With my palm, with my, like? Yeah. Okay. And what do you think it is? Okay, so that seems to be one of the like thinnest diameter ground gauge components we have. I felt two of them with a big old palm slap. And that's gotta be something in the realm of like a springtime something. Hey! Yes! I don't know how much I shouldn't mess with them. Yes, so we call this a coil tine. It's designed to have relief and to fracture and mix. Right on. Used, used primarily in synthetic horse arenas and materials that have fibers in them where they need the relief. Now, for people who've been around the dirt for a while and have seen a lot of the ground and gauge components we have, uh, this is a bit thinner of a ground and gauge component that we use on many of our attachments. Why is that? Why do you prefer something like this, uh, particularly in like synthetic footing areas? Because it needs to have the added relief to spring back and it can't have buildup. That material, especially with the fibers, can, can build up and wrap around and plug. So. You avoid that with an engagement like that. Right on. Okay, Matt, I want you to try this next one. Just reach into the box and just touch it. Oh, I don't know about that one. Um, definitely got like a palm full of like a flat blade of some kind. Um, is that, we're looking like a profile blade? Oh, no, I need no. you to reach in. You All get right. a little bit more of a to touch. It out. Oh, okay, see, I only got the flat part of it. Okay, so yeah, no, this is, oh. Oh, this is a good one. You got a good one here, buddy. All right, so we're looking at, uh, this is a section of a finish rake, a uh, 12 inch section, because of the two bolts here, it's not a rounded wing on the edge piece. Uh, I think it is probably too light to be the three quarter inch, so I'm guessing it is a half inch thickness. <laughs> Uh, probably powder coat gray, am I right? And so you... 70 gray to be specific. <laughs> and, and thank you very much. Take off the blindfold. <laughs> Goof. Uh, yes, this is our finish rake. All of our tools in natural horse arenas finish with this because it feathers out, leaves a beautiful finish, and does the right balance of putting, leaving some air in the material, but pressing some out of it. And it's adjustable, especially like on our TR3E series, that lets you adjust that to feather it out. You mentioned the bend in the end, that's intentional, and it is so we get that nice feathered finish yeah, on the, many of our tools. On the far left side, far right side, on the E series, right? So a half inch thick finish rake like this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Nate, this is the TR3 E series, as well as the Rascal line, and this also can be found on the underbody weldment of the ABI Force, right? Correct, correct. On the, the TR3, the original tool, that's out of a much heavier material for like our contractor tools or our SR3s. That's okay. an abrasion resistant three quarter inch rake. Got it. Right so. on. You had me on that one. Okay, Matt, reach your Number hand three. into the box for the next one. This is always Just so scary. <laughs> We're gonna put a snake in there for one of these. I gotta pick that one up. I've got no idea. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so I got it on the side. So. Uh, yeah, we've got a coil here, right? Gives it away uh, with a curved blade here at the end with a one bolt. So this would be, uh, we're talking the S tine or the spring tine on, this is the new um, Sport Pro lineup, right? Yep. Hey! Yeah. So we use S tines that give relief, again, in material that has a lot of fiber content. And so it gives relief. Now, why don't we want to use this in a natural footing arena is because this gives relief, which is great, except for it doesn't actually go to a uniform depth. And so it will struggle to break up really yeah. hard compaction that clay creates in a natural arena. Yeah, and so we prefer these in the, uh, in the synthetic arenas. Any kind of arena has like a rubber mat 
uh, or any uh, kind of hydration up underneath the arena, this is fantastic because then it, it gives, right? So you're not gonna yep. grab that rubber mat underneath, whereas uh, in traditional dirt arenas where you've got either stone base, uh, like crushed stone or a thick, heavy, um, pressed clay base, well, that they can handle something a little bit more aggressive and you can get that uniform depth then. Yep. And the, correct me if I'm wrong, right, Nate, aren't these reversible here so you can actually yep. wear on both sides of that blade? Yep. You can just flip this thing right yeah. over. The other interesting thing is on our Sport Pro series, we can change the angle of engagement. Oh, the whole assembly, right? The whole assembly change, actually yeah. turns and pivots on this. Again, to change how aggressive and how much, um, how this point actually contacts the material. Right on. Okay, Matt, okay. now I got gotcha. you. Try this one. Oh no, are you Just saving a quick like, the tap. best for last? Yeah. All right, I think I've got an idea, but can I pick it up to make sure? Because I felt, I think there's like a bolt head in no, there, right? Wasn't there? No, 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 no. You gotta just be a guess. If I hit, I, if I, uh, is that, I just, think it's a scar fire complete. That's what I think it is. Okay. I get it? Yep. Ah, yeah, landed okay, right on the bolt head. But you only got half of it. <gasps> All right, well, chill out, so... No, 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 <laughs> take, take off the blindfold there. Hey, yep, scarified complete. But look in the box. Oh, you, see, you didn't tell me there were two things in the box. I didn't have to tell you there were two things in the box. Two kinds of scarifiers. All right, Nate, talk me through, what are the differences? Yeah, why the heck do we need two different kinds of scarifiers? So, one of the first contrasts that we're gonna make here is the thickness. So again, in our high fiber Sport Pro line, we need a thinner scarifier, so we don't have extra buildup. If we try to run a scarifier like this through that material, it's all gonna wrap up, it's gonna ride up, it's gonna bunch up, it's gonna plug, it's not gonna be a good experience. But if I'm working in a gravel driveway or fracturing heavy clay or prepping a seed bed, I want the big scarifier. Yeah. I don't want this smaller, thinner one. These are also made out of an abrasion resistant steel to make them last longer, but the replaceable tips are the way to go if you're working in those other varied yeah. materials. Well, and these are, I know you're comparing uh, kind of ground engaging for arena snares, but these are the same kind of shanks and tips used on gravel work, right? So for the Gravel Rascal line, for the Tier 3 E-Series, yeah. uh, Property Edition line, for the um, the SRTR line when you're digging through yeah. heavily compacted like um, like hard pan, this is the same same setup. Yep, yep, it's those tips. Right on. Way to go. Now you tricked me on the twofer. But now, since you did me dirty, putting two in the box, it's your turn. Me. <laughs> All right, Nate, same deal, man. Reach in the box, one touch, see what you think. Can I do it one more time? No, you didn't let me do it another time. I'm just kidding, go ahead, yeah. Oh, man, feels like a roll of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that would have been so much better. Okay, I gotta pick it up. All right, pick it up. See if you can figure it out. Oh, it's a Cultipacker wheel. <laughs> there oh. you go, yeah. Okay. For those of you watching at home, we just pulled this off the R&D shelf. Don't actually know <laughs> if this is in production or not, but we figured they could figure it out. Yeah, so so this, <laughs> this is a prototype like plastic one that we were playing with, but it makes the point. So Cultipackers are used for firming up seed bed for promoting soil to seed contact. Um, and just generally setting, it'll set a nice pattern in your um, seed bed. Also break up clay clods. Um, so we offer different variations, toe behind or um, even underbelly on the force. Right on, nice work. You got it, man. And usually they are cast iron. That's what kind of goofed me up. So. <laughs> are you saying that I would trick you, Nate? Yes, yes you are. <laughs> That's all we have for the ABI Dirt. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me, Matt. I know what I'm not wanted. And we'll see you next time.